Hi guys, I'm Razor. Today we're going to be taking a look at a Milwaukee twin set, an impact driver and combi drill. It isn't exactly the same as the one you buy in the UK. Um, the only difference is this one came from the States, which is why it's got a red top to the box and not a black one. And it originally came supplied with a 110 volt charger, which obviously doesn't work for us. So, as you can see, I've used this for couple of months now it's a little bit battered but my tools really work for a living it's been absolutely superb it's replaced a Makita set which has to be said was fine I had no issues with the batteries but then they got used and recharged very regular and the Makita seemed to die if they don't have the batteries charged uh, on a regular basis so what we have here is a 240 volt charger that um, I got off eBay for 15 quid it's a dual voltage charger so it charges the M12 stuff and the M18 stuff it will do one and then it will charge the second one when that one's finished and I would kind of like to see one with a fan particularly as we're using 4 amp hour batteries here and I've got six, a total of 6 now and if you charge them one after the other it does get quite hot so I'd have liked to have seen a fan but there you go if we start with a combi drill uh, one of the reasons I bought this was I've got some Milwaukee kit already I've got a lot of M10 stuff, M12 stuff and I have the SDS drill that I've had for about four years, I've had no problems with it at all, the 18 volt SDS, it's been phenomenally good. Um, so I wanted to carry on and, and keep to the same battery system, so all the batteries are interchangeable. This was actually advertised on eBay um, very cheaply, purely because it was brand spanking new, the guy that bought it said the drill was too heavy to use, so I guess that probably makes him an electrician by trade, doesn't it? They're quite well known for being weak. Right, it is... A, a pretty standard battery drill to be fair. We have at the bottom a 4 amp hour battery. On the battery we have a fuel gauge, 3 quarters full in this case. Everything else is pretty much what you expect to find on a cordless drill. We have a full in reverse, lock in the middle position, 2 speed gearbox, slow and fast. Metal keyless chuck, I actually thought it was plastic, I was quite pleased to find it was metal. 24 torque settings, clutch settings for the torque, when 23 just obviously isn't enough. Um, I don't know, joiners might get use out of them, I don't know anyone else that does. Then we can have it on impact, screwdriver or plain drill. And underneath we have quite a handy LED light that comes on and stays on for a little bit when you do it. The drill comes with a side handle. But it won't go vertically as a lot of people have their, their handles. It goes, it clips in and it'll go to the left side or the right side. Perhaps I'll give them sparkers a chance to actually use it. Having said that, I haven't needed it, but I've got reasonably strong wrists. But with a big wood bit in, I think you would be asking for trouble if it's snatched. So it's there. I've never used it, probably never will, but it's there. Now, the impact driver. Um, my first impact driver, same 4 amp hour battery, it's much 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 lighter than the drill, that is actually quite a heavy combi drill. A few extra features, it comes with a belt hook, you get one hook for the set, so you can have it on either one or the other, um, obviously Milwaukee are too cheap to give you two of them, although I don't use it anyway. So an impact driver, it's my first one actually, being my main trade's plumbing, I've never really needed one, although now I've got one I've found lots of uses for it. Um, taking some old boilers off, I mostly install new boilers and taking old boilers off that have got um, completely seized and quite large screws it's become a breeze, it's, it's actually helped me at no end um, apart from that I wanted one now the only thing they don't show you on YouTube when you watch hundreds of videos is how loud they are this is absolutely a beast it just, you hear it on the video and it goes brrr, no no absolutely deafening on the main thing to the extent that some joiners I know have actually gone back to just using combi drills for most of their work. Having said that, it is awesome at what it does. So, oh that's the other thing they don't tell you in YouTube videos. Yes, you can buy an impact driver, but then you have to spend 50 quid on bits for it. Um, as it happens, I bought this at the Screwfix live show for about 8 quid. And it's a DeWalt um, impact rated bit with a slidey thing on it. And about a dozen bits, and it was about 8 quid absolutely fine it's done the job so far if I was a chippy and I was putting screws in all day into wood then it probably wouldn't last five minutes but for just general use it's absolutely fine I'm still on the first bit after six weeks or so 
So for its features, we have again slide off M M18 battery that fits with our M18 stuff. It's four amp hours, so they're they're really good batteries actually. This one is fully charged, blimey. Um, I think I've only charged these two or three times since I've had them. They last a phenomenally long time. So we've got a quarter inch chuck, pull it forward to release the bit as you just saw. Forward and reverse. Where this is different to a lot of other impact drivers is that it has different torque settings. Now, I bought it not knowing if these would be any good or not, but I thought we'd give it a go. It's got these new ones on. And it does work. Um, I could get the book out and tell you exactly what torque it does at each one, but I'd rather just show you, and I really don't care what the numbers are. It's, you have to go by what it does. Do that in a second when we do a bit of a demonstration. So we've basically put it on and it tells you which one you're on. Little lights come on. So we're on section, setting one, which is that fast, setting two, that fast, and setting three. You can hear is oh, a bit dusty, a bit more. Now, as it actually spins faster, it hits harder as well. So you're actually changing the speed and the impact torque. So it, it's getting harder as well. So what we'll do is we'll do a little demonstration of it just to see how it works. Now, both of these are the Milwaukee brushless ones, and I wouldn't pretend to have a clue how they work. But apparently the motors are a million percent more efficient and they last 50 years longer, apparently. Having said that, I haven't had an issue with either of these in the last six weeks or so. They've done absolutely everything I want and they just chew through what I do on a daily basis. Now, I don't know about you, but one thing that really annoys me on YouTube videos is where people get out brand new spanking new tools, brand new drill bits and things and say, look how easily it goes through this bit of wood. Yes, well... To be fair, with a brand new drill bit, you go through any piece of wood. So, these are my actual drills out of the van. As you can see, I'm not a chippy, wouldn't ever pretend to be. Um, they don't make enough money. So, what we have here is a set of DeWalt Extreme bits. Um, actually, I do rate these. This is my second or third set of these over the last 10 years. As you can see, well, it's not even an end on that. That's what, 32 mil. They are used. These are definitely not and never have been sharpened bits. They're just literally what I use on a daily basis to go through worktops, to go through anything that's in the way, basically. So, if we're going to give it a bit of a test. Oh, that one looks a little bit better, Nick. It gets used a lot for 22 mil pipe. That one looks in a bit of a state. So, let's use the one that's in a bit of a state. If you're going to test it, let's test it, eh? That's where it takes 10 minutes to put it in the bit. Yes, and I know you're not supposed to do that. Right, so at the moment we've got it set on speed 2 and on the drill setting. Obviously, technically, because we're doing this, we should put it on speed 1 and we should do things and we should clamp the wood. But kind of not going to do any of that. What we are going to do is put on safety goggles, and that's kind of it really, in terms of safety. I should be very embarrassed if this bit doesn't bite, because there's no point on it. But if it doesn't, then I should just use another one to make a pilot, and then we'll go from there. So, we're on speed 2, um, which isn't the recommended speed for drilling something like this, particularly with a bit this size. But I'm actually just kind of abusing the tool to see if it lugs down and if it dies, or if it gets on with it. So, as you can see, it might be tricky to get it started. Get some razor power on it. Now then, you ready? I haven't got a clue what's going to happen here. Oh, almost. Right, as you can see, totally unedited. The bit's come out of the jewel now because it's um, been shaking about a bit, no doubt due to the way I was using it. The thing to listen to there was the sound of the drill and it didn't lug down, it didn't slow down in the slightest. This is an absolute beast. Another test for this kind of thing. A flat bit will get there in the end, it just chews it up and if you notice I was wiggling it backwards and forwards, it'll get there. Look at these. These are ancient, these are out of the arc. An old set of um, wood beavers. Again, these are quite hard work for drills. This one, as you can see, is totally, totally blunt as anything and rusty. 
and in fact it looks like it's been drilling through plaster but uh, there you go so if I was a chippy I'd have a set of nice ones but these get used for floorboards, work pots, all that kind of good stuff so let's actually tighten the chuck up this time there we go glass is back on again and oh well if you're going to take the mickey let's take the mickey that's about the biggest kind of knot you're ever going to find isn't it and yet again I have absolutely no idea what's going to happen here so let's go Well, we're about halfway through. The drill's fine, but the bit's um, tired. Well, we did get it to slow down, but that was on speed two. Now, the comment section there by now is probably full of irate chippies saying that's not how you use one of these bits. And they're quite right, that's not how you use one of these bits. What you're supposed to do with this is have the drill on a slower speed and let it actually bite and let it screw itself into the wood. So let's give that a try. We'll put it back to speed one. Now this is probably where it would be useful to use the side handle because um, this is where it's like to snatch when it goes through but well if nothing else it'll make good comedy won't it. Okay. You can see that we didn't even bother clearing the bit, we just forced it straight through. So there you have it, quite a clean hole as well. In general, these auger type bits are phenomenal for actually really powering through wood. Um, but they do require quite a heavy duty drill and they take quite a lot of life out of it. So the impact driver has three speed settings on it. It's got a low setting, which is probably like, we could call it the decorator setting, I suppose. That's there. It has a medium setting, which is probably somewhere around... Oh, medium setting, which is probably kind of... Oh, handyman setting. And then obviously it's got the tradesman setting, which is number three. Or should I say tradesperson? So we have a three and a half inch screw on setting one. We'll try and avoid any holes in the thing or knots. We'll pop it in there. We'll set it first and then we'll give it a go. Still awake? Well, if you are. Yes, you can see it did get the hole. It probably would have sunk it flush as well. Um, but we haven't really got time for that, have we? That's just to demonstrate the slowness of the number one setting. And it is much reduced torque. Um, I've actually put some feet on kitchen cabinets with those tiny little half inch screws on this. So we've got it set to number two now. You can probably guess I'm not particularly trying to put them in straight, they're just going in. And you don't, the beauty of an impact driver is you don't have to absolutely wrench it down onto the work. You can just hold it and let the weight go. I'm holding it a bit stronger than I would here um, because everything's a bit wobbly and about and I'm a bit wobbly too. Okay, so we've got the bit set. Let's try and get it straightish and go. As you can see, we've sunk right into the wood there. Um, almost that other side, actually. It's far, far quicker than it was on number one. But Razor, what's the top setting like? And are you going to drill through your oak table? Very possibly. Right, OK, we'll avoid most of the bits and pieces here. Let's get a set. And let's have a look. Well, as you can see, 
in terms of speed and power, that's a beast. To that, so there you have it. God, these get hot. Thoroughly, thoroughly recommend these two. Um, to be fair, most of the ones from the big players are good. The Makita ones are very good. Um, Bosch are very good. I've personally used Makita and Milwaukee, although this is my first impact. I've had lots of combi drills. I tend to find that the Makitas, they last better, slightly better on battery run time, but the Milwaukee's are more powerful, which I guess it makes sense if you've got the same amount of power in the batteries, but one tool is taking the power out quicker, that tool will hit harder, but won't last quite as long. If you have any comments, please put them in the section below. Um, and if you want to give us a thumbs up for the video, great, it might inspire me to make a few more. Although, the amount of beer Ches bought me the other week had quite a lot to do with it. Um, if you didn't like it, well, you didn't like it. Take care and I'll see you soon. In fact, you might want to come back soon just to see if I actually bothered to clear this mess up or not, or if it's still on the next video. Have a great time.